the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Amidst the picturesque rolling hills of the Cotswolds, Sudley Castle stands out as a thing of beauty. Its rich history dates back centuries and explores the stories of some of the most well-known royal figures in history. Welcome to this special episode on Sudley Castle and its connection to Catherine Parr, Thomas Seymour, and Lady Jane Grey. But we'll begin with Edward IV. The tall and dashing Yorkist King Edward IV's reign was not without backstabbing and side-flipping. King Edward was aware of the men who were loyal to his predecessor, Henry VI. Those men could not be trusted, and plots were afoot to reinstate King Henry. In the year 1469, a supporter of Henry VI, called Ralph Butler, was commanded by Edward IV to sell his castle to the crown. But how loyal was Butler to Henry VI? In 1440, Ralph Butler, then a military commander and member of the king's household, was inducted into the Knight of the Garter and created Baron Sudley. Two years later, using the spoils from the Hundred Years' War, Butler built Sudley Castle on its present-day site. Clearly high in favor with Henry VI, Butler was appointed Treasurer of the Exchequer and High Treasurer of England in 1443. But those prosperous days would soon come to an end. On the 29th of March, 1461, Edward IV defeated the forces of Henry VI at the Battle of Taunton. For years, Edward IV had to deal with the consequences of his conquest. The Wars of the Roses raged on. The capture of King Edward by the Earl of Warwick that year and the murder of his father-in-law, Richard Woodfill, as well as his wife's brother, John, likely left Edward with a hunger for revenge, if not for his wife, then for his kingdom. Upon his release from captivity in 1469, Edward IV commanded Ralph Butler to sell Sudley Castle to the crown. Edward IV then granted the castle to his brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. Gloucester used Sudley as his base for the Battle of Tewkesbury in 1471. Tewkesbury was the decisive battle of the Wars of the Roses, which ended in the defeat and death of Henry VI's son and heir, Edward of Westminster. In 1478, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, exchanged Sudley Castle for Richmond Castle. Sudley then remained a royal property. A few months after his brother's sudden death in April 1483, Richard was crowned King of England, and he once again held ownership of Sudley Castle. After Richard III was killed at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, the property remained with the crown. The new king, Henry VII, granted the castle to his uncle, Jasper Tudor, Duke of Bedford, who held it until his death in 1495. Bedford remained childless, and so the castle was once again reverted to the crown. We'll continue the story after a quick word from our sponsor. Forty years later, in 1535, Sudley Castle was where Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn stayed during their royal progress. It was on this progress that Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell continued their plans for the dissolution of the monasteries. It would seem that sometime in the next decade, the royal castle began to fall into disrepair. This was remarked by John Leland. It was going to ruin under the reign of Henry VIII. When, in 1547, Thomas Seymour was raised by his nephew Edward VI to Baron Seymour of Sudley, he had some major work to do. His intention was to make Sudley an estate fit 
for a queen. While we do not have a tally yet of how much money was spent on repairs, we can assume that anything he did was not done cheaply. By the summer of 1548, Sudley was ready and awaited the arrival of its royal guest, Catherine Parr. By the time of their departure for Sudley, Parr was already nearing the end of her pregnancy. Long journeys whilst pregnant are never enjoyable, less so in 1548, when bumpy roads and slow travel were always expected. Along with the Queen on her journey to the Cotswolds was Lady Jane Grey, the ward of her husband, Thomas Seymour. In present day, the castle we now see is stunning. However, Catherine Parr's presence chamber is now in ruins. Within those ruins, you can see the remains of two floors. The top floor is visible by the location of the fireplace. On either side of the fireplace are two nearly floor-to-ceiling windows with 12 panes each. A few feet above the same fireplace is another window, this one with four panes side by side. One can imagine the amount of daylight that would come through these windows and inevitably lighting up a royal tapestry or two. And just outside the windows, Parr could gaze upon the Queen's Garden, surely the most magnificent of all their gardens. The house itself was full of a staff including ladies who would serve the Queen, along with more than 120 gentlemen of the household and yeomen of the guard. At the end of August, Catherine Parr gave birth to a daughter at Sudley Castle. She would be called Mary after the Queen's stepdaughter, future Mary I. Catherine and Thomas were overjoyed with the birth of a healthy child, but the joy would not last. After years separated by Parr's royal marriage, Seymour and Parr had the opportunity to be the happiest they had ever been, yet disease would intervene. Catherine Parr died from puerperal fever five days after delivering a daughter. Her funeral and burial were held at St. Mary's Chapel at Sudley Castle. Materials like black fabric to hang in the church and candles were ordered for the service. The Queen's chief mourner was Lady Jane Grey. Thomas Seymour mourned for quite some time after the loss of his wife and moral compass. As a team, the couple worked well together, but apart, Thomas's fate would be sealed by an axe. Upon his death on the 20th of March, 1549, Sudley Castle reverted to the crown. Thank you so much for joining me on this special episode about Sudley Castle. I'm Rebecca Larson. Until next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.